Welcome to this workshop on shaping the future at the International Arbitration Training and Conferences and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us. We're so grateful to the support we've received from Global Arbitration Review and Arbitral Women in putting this programme together and also to Arbitration Place and Freshfields for their incredibly valuable logistical support. Thank you all. This workshop is about shaping the future of international arbitration, but really it is about change. You've already made that change by simply deciding to come along today, so thank you for that. But it's about what we can achieve in this sphere. And I really hope that at the end of today, you will understand better and go away with a clear pathway towards sustainable change in your practices. I'm very much put in mind uh, when I think about what we need to do in this space. I'm very much put in mind of that wonderful quote from Margaret Mead, who won the Planetary Citizen of the Year Award, I think back in 1978. And she said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And I would have to say that I don't think anyone could argue that the international arbitration community is not thoughtful and committed. And when I look back at what the campaign for greener arbitrations was at the very beginning, when it was really just a very short blog post leading to the Green Pledge, um, and when I look at what it has developed into in the past three years, I feel hugely inspired inspired to believe that we can achieve real change in our industry. And of course, during the pandemic, we have all had change thrust upon us. But it is really up to us now as to the choices we make regarding how we build on those changes we've had to make and how we make sure that they are the ones we should be making as we look towards the future. We cannot, in all conscience, revert to our former wasteful ways. We all know how wasteful the practice of international arbitration could be. You don't need me to hit you with data and statistics. You don't need to make me to talk about the tons of carbon that each arbitration emitted. Yes, I can tell you about where that carbon comes from, the long haul flights, the mountains of bundles, the unnecessary travel to the unnecessary meetings. But I think deep down, we all knew how wasteful our practices were. And we all just thought it was someone else's problem. But now we are in a climate emergency. There is no doubt about that. And it is our problem. And so I want us to, and I know we can, rise to the challenge of addressing climate change in our international arbitration practices. I don't want us to fall into the trap that I do see looming, which is that we spend time talking about the Green Pledge at conferences, we spend time arguing, we are lawyers after all, but arguing about whether a high value arbitration has a higher carbon footprint than a lower value dispute and, and so on. We don't have the luxury of that time. The North American Subcommittee has put together a phenomenal programme for you to give you a real roadmap of what we all have to do in this space and how we can shape international arbitration training and the delivery of conferences so that it is fit for purpose for the future. I'm thinking of the future I'm very much minded by JFK who said, those that look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future and really that is what it is all about today. So today we are very excited to be working with you all to shape a greener future for international arbitration. I hope you enjoy it.